reading back uh, um, chapter five, and um, you know, it's talking about um, um, the, the I mean the very difficult, challenging commandments of the Lord. Um, Matthew five and verse forty three onwards, and he says, "You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love." your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who... Um, just a minute. Yeah. Um, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven in is perfect. Right. So as we look through these verses, um, the Lord is actually challenging his disciples and he's saying that those who do not deserve our love, those who do not deserve our goodness, our good acts, those who do not deserve these things, seemingly deserve because of their actions, because of the way they live their life. The Lord is saying, do that exact thing. If they don't deserve your love, love them anyway. If don't, you know, so he's saying, bless, if they don't deserve, um, the blessing, do not curse, but bless them, pray for them. Um, and he goes on to say, this is how the Father is. Right? This is how the Father is. He sends rain on the just and on the unjust. He makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good. So when we do this, we are actually walking in the steps of our Heavenly Father. Right? We are, in other words, we are being uh, we can say we are being Christ-like when we do this. Right? Um, and also, if we see that, uh, if we if we see um, forty-six verse forty-six, we see that the Lord is saying, you know, what reward have you? Right? If you love only those who love, what reward do have you? In other words, it's saying there is a reward in in walking in being Christ-like. There is a reward in walking in the steps of the Heavenly Father. Right? And it's uh, it, it's not something that we can do in our own strength, and uh, we realize that. It's, it, we cannot do it um, in our own flesh, but it is the work of the Holy Spirit to bring this about. Right? It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit that is displayed in and through our lives in order to actually walk in this. And verse 48, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. And the word used there, telaios, that you shall be brought to maturity. The Lord's desire is that we come to that maturity, even as our uh, Father in heaven is is complete and mature. So um, so I just wanted to read this and just um, challenge us, us as leaders as people who are in ministry and who interact with people, there are many opportunities not to love. There are many opportunities to to not bless people, right? Because we they they do not always do say behave uh, the way that is appropriate, the way that is honorable, and so on. We meet all kinds of people, and uh, and but the Lord's challenge and command. To, to us is this um, the Lord is saying I say to you, you know, it's like a direct instruction, you do this there is a reward you will be like your heavenly father and you will be perfect right, so let's remember this um, even as we interact with people Okay, uh, let's pray Father we thank you Lord for these uh, for this reminder reminder to, to be like you for this reminder that there is a reward in being like you. And Lord, it's your will and desire that we be perfect just as you are. And Lord, we ask for the work 
the anointing, the work of your Holy Spirit in us to bring us to that place of maturity, bring us to that place of perfection, God. And Lord, uh, Lord I pray that you would remind us, Lord, <clears throat> even when we interact with people who do not deserve, God, that you will, we will, you will remind us that um, that you actually poured out your grace when we did not deserve. And Father God, we pray that you will enable us to do this the right way, Lord. Enable us to do it in a way that's, um, you know, Lord, that's not of the flesh, but of the work uh, of the work of your Holy Spirit, Lord, of the empowering and um, display, Lord, of your Holy Spirit. Father God, we thank you. We come at each one of us, Lord. Uh, struggling to do this, maybe, Lord, struggling to walk in this manner, Lord, we come at each one of us into your mighty hands, and we ask that, uh, Lord, you will enable us, Lord, to to perfectly represent to you, Lord, even as we interact with people, even as we lead people, Father God, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, yes. Just a quick win. Okay. Yeah. So we've been looking at um, uh, winning with people. I think the last section, we've come to the last section of winning with people, which is uh, um, uh, uh, when, when it comes to winning with people, um, we look at it as uh, something that is, uh, that is mutually beneficial. Like we, where we are, we can create a win-win relationship something that's mutually beneficial something that's a win for uh, both right? uh, something that is rewarding for both and uh, and that is something that uh, we can work at we can look at right so we're going to look at a few principles um, uh, uh, with regards to that how can we actually create a win-win relationship how can we uh, because when it comes to leadership when it comes to uh, leading people yes there are times when we you know we want to get the tasks done and we we most times we uh, get the tasks done and that is time bound uh, you know it could be uh, it could be a it could be a you know like a typical ministry setting it could be a service it could be a, a special meeting it could be an outreach whatever you know things are time bound and and uh, you know so how can it be a win for others as well might we we want we we know that we cannot do things in isolation. We can't do things alone, and it requires people. So, how can it be a win for others as well as uh, as it as it can be for for us? Right. So, um, like Stephen Covey, you know, puts it like this. Let me just share that. Um, Okay, win-win is a frame of mind and heart that constantly seeks mutual benefit in all human interactions. Win-win is based on the paradigm that there is plenty for everybody, that one's success is not achieved at the expense or exclusion of the success of others. You know, it's a paradigm is a is a, it's a big shift, right? So, so this win-win is based on a, on that big shift in thinking. Uh, big shift in the way we do things, the way we interact. That on the understanding that one success does not have to deprive the success or the well-being of another person. Okay, sure, there's sacrifice both ways. Sure, there is uh, uh, you know there are things to be done uh, which require greater effort, maybe uh, success, responsibility, all that. But it need not deprive the other person of success. It need not deprive the other person of uh, of one's well-being. Right. So that's the win-win mindset. Right. So, um, but to be honest, like John C. Maxwell mentions, uh, he just calls to attention that you know there are some good relationships, there are bad relationships. There are, you know, there are some people. With whom we want to spend time, right? We we we'd love to spend time, and we we you know we want to just be there with them. And there are some people with whom that whom we want to avoid, right? Whom we want to, um, you know, it's, we 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 just want to do the basic minimum 
as much as possible and then move on right um so what separates the the, the two relationships like what is it that separates and uh, it talks about synergy right where uh, the sum of the parts is greater than the whole right synergy where everybody working together and contributing and and doing things um it, it brings about synergy and where everybody's individual contribution put together is exponential it's it brings about uh, a big win uh, for the uh, when you say for the body or for corporately and also for each person right so it is rewarding it brings value to the individual as well so it talks about that so uh, in creating a win win relationship right there is something that somebody receives uh, even as they give okay? and the thing is this that um, uh, well what we uh, the, like when we strive for a win when we strive for achieving a particular goal the the reward for each person maybe in the team or or maybe if it's just two people um the reward could be very different right so it talks about the, the currency which the person receives or the reward that the person receives might be very different like uh, for example one could be mentoring the other person and uh, in return the person is not receiving you know the same thing right the one who is being mentored is just able to maybe give gratitude okay and uh, probably the the other the one who is actually mentoring receives that gratitude and uh, and the satisfaction of seeing somebody being mentored and brought to a higher level than than maybe even possibly than uh, where they are right now where the person who's mentoring is, the mentor himself is right now go beyond the mentor so there is satisfaction and the gratitude well that's a reward in itself okay that's a win win so it need not be the same thing right okay so there are some uh, four principles that uh, John C. Maxwell talks about, uh, so he talks about uh, the boomerang principle, then talks about the friendship principle, the partnership principle, and the satisfaction principle. So, um, so let's uh, let's just look at these. Now, I just wanted to, uh, you know, we've been looking at uh, like various principles and, uh, sorry, various principles, and these are based on wisdom. These are based on, uh, you know, if you if you look at it deeply, it's based on scripture, um, though it doesn't normally, you know, there's no chapter or verse that is quoted for these things. But um, um, so as we look at these things, uh, it's good to go back and, uh, you know, to just refer to it from time to time, you know, as leaders. Maybe you want to look at uh, some of the laws of leadership, um, and we're going to be looking at teamwork, maybe look at the laws of teamwork. Um, since these are practical things, you know, when we find ourselves in a position of leadership, uh, uh, or maybe we are, you know, working towards that, uh, it's good to refer to these things from from time to time, right? Uh, go over this and and refer to it, and it can be very enriching because in different seasons of leadership, we find that okay, we are able to relate to these things far better. Right. Maybe when we started off, these things, these principles seemed like, well, concepts or theories, uh, which, uh, which which we could not relate to. To some extent, we could relate to, but uh, not that much. But then uh, in a different season of leadership, we're able to relate to it because of the experience and because of the, you know, the situation that we find ourselves in, the challenges that we find, uh, face ourselves. Right. So just wanted to uh, uh, encourage us to do that right even after we finish the course and move on um, to really refer to it from time to time okay so the boomerang principle it's it's based on you know what we call as the boomerang right i think uh, everyone uh, knows what a boomerang is it's a uh, it's actually an australian indigenous australian um, weapon actually let me see if i can pull out a um, uh, picture so it's um, 
it's something that's uh, uh, that goes around. Okay, let me just share that um, with you. Um, oops, where are we? Okay. Okay, just a quick uh, share. Okay, so you see that um, it's uh, like an angled piece of wood. You release it, it goes, and it comes back. Okay, so it, uh, it is used as a weapon, used as a toy, um, and uh, and basically it just returns. Right? It's it's uh, thrown in such a way that it goes, it reaches uh, a particular point, and then it comes back. Um, uh, so yeah, so that's about it. So it's a simple uh, thing. So the boomerang principle is what you release coming back, okay? what you give uh, coming back. Okay. So in other words, when we help others, we are actually helping ourselves. Okay. So uh, it's not that uh, we uh, we want ourselves to be helped, and that's why we help others. No, but just a simple observation that when we actually help others, we are helping ourselves, right? So, uh, so that's that's the principle. Okay. So when we add value to people, okay. Uh, so John C. Maxwell says that by experience, when he added value to people, he d he saw that many actually wanted to add value to him okay so when we say adding value maybe you see somebody who's doing things who's working who's maybe who's uh, struggling to uh, like say you know in a work situation struggling to do certain things um like struggling to solve certain things um solve a problem maybe and then you add value to it by probably giving them a tool you know, a simple thing would be like maybe uh, if it's a carpenter and he's doing something, you give him a tool, like give him a hammer, a better hammer, maybe a better, you know, or maybe instead of a ha hammer, you're giving him a um, like a power tool, or something that can actually drive nails in, and something that can, you know, uh, something like a power tool. You're handing that to the person, and so it's a better tool to get the job done in a shorter time and more efficiently. So the person, uh, you know, is uh, there's value that you've added to the work of that person, right? So, so, uh, so he says that in his experience and his observation that when he added value to people's lives in that manner, uh, and typically in ministry, maybe it's godly counsel, maybe it's support, maybe it's prayer, maybe just being there um, as a source of comfort. Or all that, that people desire to add value back to 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 them, right? so to him, right? So that's what he uh, that's what he saw. So uh, so, but uh, you know, there are he says there are three kinds of people. Okay, uh, there are three kinds of people when it comes to uh, this, and we just need to be mindful of. Okay, um, and what are those? One. Okay. that there are takers and who never give. You know, it seems contradictory to the previous statement that when you add value to people, that, uh, well, people, most people desire to add value back, right? But there are also different kinds of people, maybe different levels of maturity um, and so on. So there are takers who want to take and who focus on themselves maybe because of whatever they've gone through, whatever lack they have, whatever insecurities. So they they receive okay, they, and they never give and they are never satisfied. Okay. Um, they are always concerned about what they can get in life. They receive and uh, they never give, give back. They are not in a position to give back and they're not having that mindset to give as well. But they're always concerned about um, themselves. Um, then uh, the other thing, the other set of people could be is what he calls as traders. Okay. 
So traders typically, so they receive, right? they, they want to do an exchange and it has to be a proper exchange. So they receive and they are actually ones who are keeping score. Right, so they receive, and then they say, "Okay, this is this is how much I received. So therefore, I need to give back so much." Okay, so it's an exchange. Uh, so, uh, so they need not initiate uh, the giving or initiate the uh, you know adding value. They they receive, and then in proportion of what they think as okay, in proportion to this, I want to give back. Okay, so traders. And then we have um, investors. Okay. We have investors. So investors give and then they receive. Okay. So they are focused on others. They give and they receive. If they get something in return, the investors know that, okay, there could be a return now, there could be a return later. And they're not so much as concerned about the return or when and how it will happen, but they are concerned about the investment. Right? They want to invest. So uh, these are, they understand that people are of value. They understand, they embrace the, the boomerang principle that it comes around when they are investing and actually helping them in many ways, right? Um, so they do that. So uh, some of the things that uh, you know investors do, and this is what they uh, they sow, and this is what they reap. Um, so three things, right? It could be the the return could be in terms of you know something that's financial worth. Okay. So it could be what you know uh, calls it valuables, things that provide financial worth. When people think about receiving something in return for giving, the thoughts often turn to material. So it's um, material benefits. Okay. It could be in terms of um, values or things that bring fulfillment to us. So what are these? It could be uh, maybe emotionally. It could be spiritually. Right, we uh, we feel better. It, it need, need not be something material, right? It need not be something material, but just the satisfaction of having uh, helped someone. Okay, so talks about values or uh, something that is uh, spiritually fulfilling, something that is emotionally fulfilling, right? So it adds to us. It benefits us in that ways, in those ways. And uh, thirdly, it could be virtues okay so valuables values and talks about virtues things that actually develop character build character um so uh, so we every time we overcome that uh, overcome the, that you know that pull or overcome that desire to to hold back overcome the desire to uh, to think about the self right to be focused on the self and every time we overcome that and do something for others now we are actually building character right we are breaking certain things in us and we are building certain things in us and right? we are going beyond our comfort zone we are going overcoming the pull of the flesh and so that's developing character so um, we receive something in return in in these ways it could be valuable it could be material worth it could be uh, where people say okay i just want to do this oh, i've received so much so therefore i want to and that could be that could be very minimal right it need not be always uh, you know someone who's blessing you know uh, that's fine and also secondly it could be values and thirdly it could be things that build character in us so virtues right so um so this is what uh, people do so when we when we invest in others when we uh, when we in line with this what do we call as a boomerang 
principle when we in invest in others. Um, we put others first. That is what we saw. I mean, just getting ready to, you know, even interact, getting ready to build relationship with people. That is what we saw, you know, putting others first. And uh, it's good to focus on what we are investing in, okay, rather than the return. Okay. What is it? Like, uh, how are we investing? Is it a wholehearted? Is it uh, something of quality, something of value that we are bringing in? Um, something even that is demanding, like from our side. So that's the we focus on the investment and not just the return. Okay. And uh, also, when we are investing, the Bible talks about where Paul writes and he says, you know, commit these to faithful people. He's talking about the teachings. He's talking about the you know the the precepts and everything. They commit these these words to faithful people who are able to teach others okay so so what does that mean that means that well when we are when it comes when it happens to investing uh, and we need to invest in a strategic manner but Paul says you know come at these to faithful people so we find out the faithful or people who are committed, people who are faithful, and who also have the ability. Okay, so so sometimes when it comes to you know not all investing, um, not all efforts, but when it comes to certain things, maybe in like a mentoring, maybe like a discipling kind of a relationship, right? So we do this in a strategic manner. Right, um, and also it helps that you're not like doing this, doing this for others who do not have an interest in, who do not ha have an inclination. Right, um, so uh, we do this in a strategic manner. So we also need to understand that when we uh, in with regard to the boomerang principle, if we want to give or if we want to invest, uh, it requires their yes right? whomever it is that we're talking specifically about um, not just being about friendly about being kind about doing good to others and we're talking specifically about investing in people right um, adding value to people's lives uh, in a in a focused manner in a strategic manner that requires their permission so we cannot do against their will uh, we we cannot do uh, you know against their permission against their consent. So if they are very indifferent or totally not um, uh, responsive or unwilling to even learn or go through the whole thing, then there's no point. Right. So we need the consent. We need the buy-in of the person uh, to actually even start. Right. Um, and uh, there will be a return because that's what the boomerang principle says. There will be a return, and the return may not be, you know, uh, uh, um, in ways that we kind of visualize or in the timeline that we have, but there will be a return, right? Um, so, because there is the sowing and there is the reaping, so there will be a return, and uh, and actually in ways that we can we we can we cannot imagine the ways by which our investment uh, maybe of time maybe of effort whatever help and um, the mentoring uh, the discipling um, that we do we cannot just imagine the kind of impact that it will have on people and the kind of impact that the others the other people can have on others right so uh, uh, talks about the story of uh, you know the Helen Keller, the author, the lecturer. And, uh, so she was uh, she was blind, she was deaf, and uh, and because of that, in the early stages she was extremely you know extremely temperamental because she was blind, she was deaf, very frustrated, uh, growing up and uh, you know. Uh, Will throw things and tantrums, and you know, if you read through her life, uh, but 
uh, there was this lady, Anne Sullivan. Okay, and uh, uh, Helen Keller was just seven years old when Anne Sullivan started taking care of her, and uh, and she was. It was very extremely difficult, but Anne Sullivan, with her patience and firmness, uh, enabled her to communicate. Right, and uh, well, I don't know the too much of the details of it, but really helped uh, to pull through. And uh, Helen Keller went on to study, receive a degree, and uh, started to write, uh, uh, became a famous author, and so on, right? Um, but the thing is that Anne Sullivan really, it took something out of her, but she saw the need and went on to invest, right? And the return was, of course, to see Helen Keller blossom into a person that um, that was previously not thought possible that she was her life was going to be a complete waste uh, when she would not you know she would not uh, be even able to understand and forget learning but even understand basic things but and uh, Anne Helen Anne Sullivan actually helped her to overcome all those um, challenges right and the thing is when Anne Sullivan reached a, reached an age and a health condition where uh, she could not take care of herself. You know, many years later, it was Helen Keller who actually stepped in and um, who uh, took care of her. Right, so it just comes around. It's basic, you know, principle. Okay, so when it comes to a win-win relationship, understand that it will come around. So it will help. We will be helped as well. But let that not be the focus. But um, the focus to bring value to invest in others and over a period of time see the life changed right so we look at uh, the boomerang principle okay let's look at one more which is uh, which is what uh, john c maxwell calls as a friendship principle okay uh, so it's it's simply this that people will work with people they like and if things are tough, they will still continue to work. Okay. In other words, he puts it like this. Um, let me just share that. Um, so this is all things being equal. People will work with people they like. And all things not being equal, they still will. Okay, meaning that uh, there are certain things that people will do. You know, maybe it's a formal work relationship. Uh, maybe it's you know it is to stretch, go beyond what is actually required. It is maybe you know there are certain the environment is not really conducive, but people will still go that extra mile and do it simply because you're their friend okay so the question to ask is am i a friend to the people whom i work with okay. so the, the the thing is this we we sometimes think that okay if i am being a friend to those whom i work with to those who i you know i lead then they will take advantage okay they will take advantage um, so being a friend does not mean that you hold back from correction. Being a friend does not mean that uh, you don't speak the truth. Being a friend does not mean that you, you know, you are firm with what the boundaries are. Uh, being a friend does not mean any of that. Right? Being a friend does not mean that you give yourself to be exploited or you allow yourself to be a doormat. It's not. It's not that. So that's being a. Uh, this is being a bad example of how one can be a friend. So, so uh, being a friend is. So let's look at that. Right. So thing is that people will, will help. People will go beyond their, maybe their, the regular working hours. Go beyond the nine to five. Go beyond what is their job description. Okay, so they will not say, okay, this is not my responsibility. 
right when it comes to certain pressure critical situations critical um uh, you know uh, critical uh, circumstances that requires you know maybe deadlines people will go beyond what is uh, uh, what they what they you know what is actually expected of them uh, simply because of friends and and looking into our own lives i'm sure that you know you you can think of certain things that people have uh, uh, done you know for you because because you are a friend or maybe some things that you have done because you know they are your friends right maybe you it was uncomfortable situations maybe it was uh, uh, you know something that 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 is uh, you know uh, that even required you to do something foolish but you did it because uh, because of the friend right so the things that we need to understand is that um, you know something that John C. Maxwell shares that real friends are scarce in the sense you know when it comes to real friendship. Let's face it, uh, the reality is that there are not many of them. Okay, there there are not many who uh, uh, well if you have many that's that's fantastic. Many many real good friends that's great. Let's uh, say something about you and something about. Uh, you know uh, uh, about the others as well, but the fact is that real friends are scarce. There are not too many of them. But also, that uh, real friends are refreshing. They bring refreshing into our lives. Not only do they correct, not only do they, uh, uh, you know, do they speak the truth, which can be uncomfortable at times, but they are also refreshing. Right. Um, so they shared experience, shared challenges. Uh, shared memories, and uh, they well, real friends are refreshing, and real friends also um, make make us better. Right? They add value. They they better our lives. They bring change. Um, they make our lives better. Okay. Um, and the faithfulness of a friend is definitely something that we cannot. Uh, we can we we cannot take for granted. Okay, so they make, make our lives better, and they are faithful. Right. Uh, here's the thing that we need to understand. Look, in order to be um, a friend to others, okay, now we cannot. It is true that we cannot develop a deep friendship with everyone. Okay, so we don't even have to try to be that. Because a deep friendship requires time, requires, and it is for some, and not all, and it's humanly not possible to be deep, uh, to have deep friendships with each and everyone that we meet or interact with. Okay, we will spread ourselves thin. There's, uh, you know, we cannot do that, right? So we don't even have to try. Definitely, you know, we should cultivate genuine deep friendships with a few okay because it's going to take time it's going to take effort it's going to take investment so we can definitely cultivate right the whole garden principle when we look at that we can cultivate with a few people okay and definitely we can be friendly kind we can be supportive and uh, compassionate, right? kind, gracious to everyone that we meet. So we will see those three, three things. You know, to everyone, definitely we can be kind, we can be uh, compassionate, we can be supportive, we can be friendly, right, to everyone. And there are few with whom we can actually gen develop, cultivate genuine friendships. Right. So we need to understand that. Okay. Um, so the thing is that um, how do we how do we do this? Is that every person that we meet, uh, you know, normally, let's say, if you're in business, you know, we and especially if it's let's say, you know, not too uh, not too long ago, there was this multi-level marketing craze, right? Because had products like Amway and and other things, and so people viewed uh, another. You know, people would 
have had a tendency to just view another person as a business uh, target. Right? They are part of the network, so they are. They are. You know, you see them as potential, uh, whatever customers or part of that chain network chain, and every person, you know, that that is how you know it could. It could, we could actually view, right? Now, uh, or uh, if it's some kind of business, you see every person as a potential customer. You see every person as uh, so you don't see them. You know, the the the. the uh, I mean, while that that could be true, the 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 flip side, the negative side of it is that you don't see them as individuals. You don't see them. We we fail to see them as people. Um, who are persons of dignity and value and worth and we see them only as okay what we can get right um so uh that's a danger and also when it comes to when it comes to ministry let's say church ministry uh or maybe evangelism um you know, we can make the same mistake right the, there's a danger in uh, you know, what they can give me what they can bring in and uh, it seems noble in the sense, uh, okay, uh, church growth, right? Uh, we look at church growth and in terms of uh, numbers and, and uh, you know, so we see each person as adding to the growth of the church. Um, and if, uh, while that is true, right, they make, it is people who are the church. And uh, well, we should focus on building the church of god um, but the fact is that we are actually building going beyond the numerical and we are looking at building lives right uh, there's nothing wrong in the the numbers the quantity because the, the whole idea behind that is that we need to reach out to the nations so which means more more people but the fact is that these are lives individual lives when we lose focus of that then the whole thing you know becomes uh, a wasteful exercise right we are just focusing on numbers we just we're not uh, looking at them as uh, god's creations god's people as individuals right so so that's the thing so if we put uh, if we look at people as as individuals, and then we look at people as people with needs, and then we look at everything else second, then we are actually practicing the friendship principle. Okay, so excuse me. Um, so this is uh, so uh, we just need to keep that in mind that we can be friendly. We can be, you know, can, can I be uh, friendly to maybe in a maybe secular work setting? Can I be, you know, can I be friends with people um, with whom, uh, who, who are reporting to me? Definitely we can. We can be friendly. We can be kind. We can be courteous. Um, you know, we can be all that. Um, and at the same time, be firm and uh, share, communicate what is expected and the consequence of, you know, um, not meeting or not reaching those expectations over a period of time, etc. So, it, it it can definitely be work. It is it can definitely be put to practice. Okay, so that's uh, those are the two things. So, any uh, any questions here uh, before we move on to uh, two other principles? Any questions? So, we looked at um, the boomerang principle and we looked at the friendship principle. Uh, so any questions, any experiences that you would like to share? See, the, uh, many times we, we look at these things and then um, in our minds we're like, okay, you know, if I do this, if I'm nice, then uh, people take advantage. Right? Or if I'm, uh, if you look at, the scripture portion that we just read right right at the beginning of the class matthew 5 and uh, you know the the last few verses of that chapter he said that you know, if if i love continue to love someone who's 
who's not um, you know reciprocating uh, uh, then i'm then i'm being a weak person right but that's not how the lord sees us you know, there is great strength in actually loving the unlovable right there is great strength in praying for those who are persecuting and so on so um so the question that arises to us is you know, how will this work right uh, can this actually work uh, in the real world like quote unquote real world can this work well the fact that, that these are there in the word of god and these are this is truth uh, which is powerful is that it it does work that, that this triumphs over uh, the works of the enemy the right? triumphs over the works of the flesh right um and so and these are investments and it, and this these have returns right so um, so we need to look at it that way and be convinced of it right so and 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 not hold back from actually applying it in our lives and applying it the right way and many times this these things do not work or these are uh, seem not to work or seem not to be uh, successful because we've not applied it in the right way right uh, even loving others you know we apply it in the wrong way and then we reap the consequences of it right um, so the boomerang principle the friendship principle definitely work um, and when it comes to win-win relationships creating win-win relationships but these need to be applied in the right way right okay uh, so no any questions uh, if there are no questions we'll take a break and then we'll come back and and resume okay, okay. <laughs> 